Hello Watch family, I'm excited to finally have time to review and discuss the Grand Seiko 9F Quartz. Welcome to my review. Thank you for clicking on my video. Before we get started, a quick wrist check. I am wearing my Omega Seamaster 300 Heritage that I recently reviewed here. Today, I will share my hands-on experience with the Grand Seiko SBGN003. This watch is part of Grand Seiko Sports Collection and I've had this in my collection for just a little bit over a year. Before we begin to ask, this is a quartz watch, but it's an exceptional quartz timepiece. In this video, I will be sharing why this is such a unique quartz watch, going over the specs, comparing this Grand Seiko to my Christopher Ward Sealander GMT, and sharing my thoughts on if you should add this to your collection and who is this for. Let's start off with discussing this impressive 9F quartz movement. But before that, if you like that sweet opening, thank you Mr. Weldon for the tip and for watching my last video review of the Christopher Ward Sealander GMT. Please drop a like, a comment, and subscribe to my channel. My birthday was a little while back, and I have a new goal to get 500 subscribers by the end of this year so I can hit my goal of reaching 1,000 subscribers by my next birthday. Okay, enough of that. Now on with the movement. The 9F86 movement is the Roy's Royce of course movements. The movement is assembled by hand by two expert craftsmen, according to Grand Seiko. This is significant because the idea behind quartz is that it's affordable and efficient. The SBGN003 is accurate to plus or minus 10 seconds a year. I repeat that, plus or minus 10 seconds a year. The average quartz watch is about plus or minus 15 seconds a month, which is significantly more accurate than the average automatic watch, which is around plus or minus 12 seconds a day. This watch has about three years of battery life and can be a great addition to any collection featuring all automatic watches. So I grab my Grand Seiko GMT whenever I need peace of mind of knowing that my watch is accurate and I'm in a rush. The convenience of having a high accuracy course timepiece in an extensive watch collection is very, very appealing. This movement also features an instant date change this is significant for quartz watches. Most watches slowly advance the date once the time past 7 p.m. According to Grand Seiko, the 9F quartz movement utilizes a cam and lever in conjunction with the date indicator driving wheel as part of a feature known as the instant date change mechanism. Through this mechanism, the date indicator driving wheel builds tension in the lever springs as it rotates, eventually releasing the stored energy when it reaches the location of the cam and driving the calendar wheel forward in the blink of an eye. While some mechanical movement possess enough torque to deliver instant date changes, Grand Seiko was the first to pioneer the mechanism in a quartz movement. I usually work through watch details section by section. However, for this video, we'll jump over to these beautiful hands as they are connected to the significance of this movement. The hands are what Grand Seiko uses on other automatic or spring drive watches. These hands require significant energy or force to force them forward given their size, finishing, and weight. Grand Seiko can accomplish this by a patented backlash auto adjust mechanism that allows the hand to strike the second mark perfectly each time, making these long white hands on the SBGN003 possible. According to Grand Seiko again, a quartz movement depends on a battery as a power source. The battery sends electricity to a quartz oscillator, which vibrates at precisely 32,768 times per second. An integrated circuit detects these vibrations and sends out an accurate time signal every second to the step motor. The step motor activates in accordance with this time signal, accurately rotating a series of gears and watch hands. Most quartz watches have small hands, particularly the second hand, because they lack the torque to drive the heavier handsets. This is why this watch retails for a little bit over $3,200. There is a significant amount of technology, engineering, and craftsmanship that makes this all possible. So there is also the fact that all the important parts are hit in a sealed structure, reducing the need for lubricating oils. Unlike some other high-end quartz watches, 
you or any watch shop can change the battery without damaging the movement. That's pretty significant. So now that we've learned a little bit about why this quartz watch differs from other standard quartz watches, let's dive into the specifications. So the Grand Seiko SBGN003 measures at 39 millimeters in diameter. My caliper said 38.7, but who's counting? The watch is 12.1 millimeters thick and has a perfect 46 millimeter lug to lug with. This allows for the watch to accommodate various wrist sizes, ranging from just under six inches all the way up to eight inches. Grand Seiko went with 19 millimeter lug width. My JLC 1958 Geophysic has 19 millimeter lugs. However, given that this is a sports watch, 20 millimeters would have been better. I could still wear the watch on several 20 millimeter NATO straps, which looked amazing. Given that this is a sports watch, it appropriately features some water resistance. The SBGN003 has 328 feet or 100 meters of water resistance. It's anti-magnetic. This is significantly less anti-magnetic than the Omega 8900 movement, but this is a quartz watch. As you can see, the case dimensions allow the watch to sit perfectly on my seven and a quarter inch wrist for reference. So don't let the dimensions scare you. This wear is larger than my Christopher Ward Sealander GMT and feels closer to a 40 millimeters on the wrist. The Zarasu polishing looks impressive on the flanks and beveled edges. I'll be honest, I haven't determined the difference between Zarasu polishing and say that of JLC or Rolex, but maybe that's the point. The Grand Seiko can deliver this finishing quality for half the price of most major Swiss brands. There is a beautifully executed satin horizontal brushing along the case band that gives the case a unique character. Like most Grand Seikos, the SBGN003 features drill lugged holes for easy strap changing. Which I think this feature is essential. This watch looks great on NATO's rubber straps and leather straps. Having drilled lug holes will prevent me from scratching the bottom of the lugs of the watch when I'm changing my straps or potentially scratching the bevel edges or the Zeratsu polishing. Look at the Grand Seiko on these two straps I picked up from Bark and Jack. It looks fantastic on the olive green one. Lastly, the case features a screw down crown. It doesn't look like it goes all the way in, but the crown is sturdy and has a nice quality. The engraved logo with the frosty background always looked terrific on Grand Seiko models as this was featured on my SBGA375 as well. The bracelet is comfortable as expected, but I have the same complaint as many other collectors about Grand Seiko bracelets. I can't put my finger on it, but something is missing and it makes me feel less substantial than bracelets from Rolex, Omega, and now even Christopher Ward because the bracelet on the Sealander GMT is really amazing. Sizing the bracelet is also a challenge. While the bracelet does have screws, the screws are probably the tiniest I've ever seen on any watch and require an equally small screwdriver. If you decide to add this watch to your collection, I recommend getting the sizing right in the beginning as there are no micro adjustments on the bracelet, but it does have four half lengths so you can get the sizing just right. The clasp look great. However, it doesn't feel super secure. This has been my problem with all Seiko class throughout the lineup. I really hope to see Seiko make improvements on this in the future. Outside of my many complaints on the functionality of the bracelet, the watch looks amazing on the wrist when it's on the bracelet and it is incredibly comfortable. So the dial features an anti-reflective coating on the inner part of the crystal. This makes the dial look inky black and looks really awesome and it really does stand out. Grand Seiko continues using Zerasu polishing on the indices, hands, and hour markers. The hour markers also feature etched laser facets that makes the dial shine when it hits certain light. The hands feature loom on the tips, and you also have loom cutouts for the indices, giving a true sports watch feel. I will add a loom shot here. The hour and minute hands are perfectly finished and look sharp as swords. They are beautifully done and catch the light spectacularly. We get a beautiful applied Grand Seiko and printed Grand Seiko script just below the 12 o'clock. This is counterbalanced with GMT in bright orange just below six. Lastly, we get the instant change in date at three o'clock. One of my favorite features of the watch is the day night indicator engraved along the rehaul. This looks great and adds a premium slash luxury feel to the watch. Lastly, we get the beautifully executed orange second hand extending to the rehaul. I think this looks really great. I love that it is long, skinny, and looks like an arrow. So this watch obviously draws a comparison to the Rolex Explorer 2, which I attribute to the bezel. It's a stainless steel fixed bezel with a 24 hour indicator. I strongly feel this is where the comparisons stop. And as I said in my Christopher Ward Sealander video, I think the SBGN003 is a better looking GNT. In my opinion, I think Grand Seiko looked at the Explorer 2 and said, 
hold my beer, let us do it better. Then they took their troll into a whole new level and put a battery in it as to remind everyone they were the reason for the quartz crisis to begin with. This is a very great looking GMT. The dial looks more prominent than the Sealander and I think that is due to the Grand Seco execution of the 24 hour bezel. It does have a little bit of a flare out which gives the dial a bit more breathing room. All right, so what I think everybody clicked on this video for, as I mentioned in my Sealander review, which I am linking below, the SBGN003 and the Christopher Ward Sealander share many design similarities. They have similar case sizes, shapes, and Christopher Ward makes the Sealander in black and with a orange GMT hand. While there are plenty of differences between the two, these two watches look closer together than either of them compared to the Rolex Explorer 2. The Christopher Ward is the ultimate value proposition watch. If I was choosing between saving up for the SBGN003 and coming across the Christopher Ward with $1,200 in my pocket, it would be really hard to pass up the Christopher Ward. The case and finishing are spectacular, and while it does not have Zeratsu polishing, this feels more like a go anywhere type build watch. It feels like it's supposed to be worn daily and taken out on the adventures. The Grand Seiko feels like a luxury sports watch and is designed to handle whatever life throws at it. However, the finishing and detailing don't give you that impression. While I like the dial execution on the Grand Seiko way better, something charming and warm about the Christopher Ward makes it a daily wearer for me. The fact that I can even compare these two watches given their price difference should tell you all you need to know about the Christopher Ward's quality and execution on the Sealander GMT. But watch collecting doesn't always make sense. And while I was fortunate enough to add both these in my collection, these watches appeal to different types of people. The Grand Seiko SBGN003 is a watch enthusiast watch. While I believe this would make an amazing one watch or be a strong second in a two watch collection, most collectors shy away from quartz watches, which always dictates non-watch enthusiast opinions. As a collector, this watch is extremely important. This particular movement pushed the boundaries of what we thought was possible in quartz watchmaking. And while it is quartz, it's made perfect sense to add to my collection. I love the idea of having one high accuracy quartz watch in a collection full of automatic watches that I can grab and go and know that the time is always going to be right. But then again, Christopher Ward delivered an, an excellent watch for under $1,200 with a respectable 56 hour power reserve and a Swiss GMT automatic movement. So this is really, really hard to choose. Uh, but okay, listen, this is what I said I was going to do in a video. If I had to choose and take away the Grand Seiko name, and the significance of the 9F quartz movement for my collection, I would definitely purchase the Christopher Ward based on looks, pricing, and execution. Uh, that was a really, really hard decision to come by. I've looked at the Christopher Ward for weeks, and I will just tell you, this watch is killer. So is the SBGN003. They are going to look great paired in my collection together, so I'm glad I did not have to make the choice. I would love to hear your thoughts on below, which one you would choose and why. So please drop a comment uh, if you've gotten to this point in the video. So anyway, so who would I recommend this watch for? This is an excellent option for someone looking for a GNT that's a bit different from the usual suspects. You can find these secondhand for around 2,300 bucks, but you can also find a few black bays for that price. So as you can see, this is definitely more of a niche segment of watch collecting. If you're looking to add an only watch and do not mind quartz, this is a great contender. This will last you a lifetime and can be worn on any occasion. And just the reliability of knowing that you can go spend $15 to $25 to have a battery replaced versus the service cost of your automatic watches, which on the low end might be $400 on the high end can range in the thousands. Uh, the Grand Seiko is a really, really good choice. Outside of that, plenty of watches in this pack segment might deserve your attention. However, not many have the utmost respect from the watch collecting community. If I saw someone wearing this in the wild, I'm buying them a beer or a coffee and more than likely get to enjoy a great conversation with another watch collector. So thank you for getting to this point in the video, checking out my thoughts on the SBGN003. And as always, thank you for watching. I'm continuing to push myself and improve the quality and content of my videos. I just wanna say thanks to everyone who's provided feedback. It has been really constructive and really helped me get the channel to where it is today. So thank you for that. Again, I have a goal to try to get this channel to uh, 500 subscribers by the end of the year. So please, if you like this channel, please like and subscribe. 
Please also check out my Instagram page, JWO Studios. This is where I post what watch I'm wearing and a bunch of other watch related content. So as always, thank you again. I will see you all soon.